Maybe when he speaks of unity, you weep. But in that moment, you feel a hundred thousand joys and laughter open within yourself. Such a being is a person of paradise. There are also those who bring you only anxiety and coldness. Those are those of hell. But whoever has realized such a secret behaves accordingly. In this endeavor, Shams encourages us to bring our helplessness, our incapacity, our need to our sustainer. For need is the foremost wing feather on the way. If you pass beyond the body and reach the soul, you'll have reached createdness. The truth is the ancient, eternal being. Where can the one who is created find the one who is eternal? What connects the earthly creature and the Lord of Lords? In your opinion, that by means of which you move and attain liberation is the soul. Then what use is it to put that soul in your hand and give it away? Even if your lovers bring you their own heads, the gift of their life, they'll have only brought cumin to Kirman, the source of all cumin. What is it worth to bring cumin to Kirman? What renown will it bring? What price will it fetch? There is a palace where he is without need. So take your need there. Because the one without need loves need. And you, due to that need, may suddenly leap out of these created affairs. Something from the Eternal One is connected to you. It is love. The ambush of love comes and embraces you. Just as it says in the Quran, they love God is the effect of God loves them. Then you will see the ancient eternal one through the ancient eternal one because he perceives all vision. This is the entirety of the words that do not end and will not end until the day of resurrection. And Shams encourages us to enter this fortress of oneness of la ilaha illallah. He says to say the name is easy. You may say, I've entered the fortress, or I went to Damascus. But if it were just a matter of the tongue, in an instant you could ascend from earth to the heavens or to the empyrean and the throne. The Prophet Muhammad said, the faithful one who says, la ilaha illallah, with purity and from the heart, enters paradise. You sit and say, he is one, but who are you? You're more than 6,000. Become one. Otherwise, is his oneness your concern? You're a 100,000 particles, and each particle is carried off by some desire. With each particle, you're carrying an illusion. The one who demonstrates purity of intention and sincerity of action goes to paradise, and then there's no need for a promise, such as if he or she can do this, he or she enters paradise. For if he or she is able to do this, he or she is completely paradise itself. And moving ahead, Often, it is through difficulty that that love is deepened. Shams reminds us of Layla and Majnun. Harun al-Rashid, the famous Abbasid emperor, said one day, Bring Layla to me, that I might see her just once. Majnun has fallen into total difficulty because of his love for her. From east to west, Lovers have made the story of their love their mirror. After spending lots of money 
and with many sly ruses, they managed to bring Layla. They placed her into a secluded room in the palace of the Caliph Harun al-Rashid. In the evening, the Caliph came to the secluded room. Candles had been lit. He looked at her carefully for some time. And then for some time, he sat with his head bowed. Finally, he said to himself, let me make her speak. Perhaps the beauty of her face becomes more apparent when she speaks. Harun turned his face to Layla and asked, Are you Layla? Yes, I am Layla. But you are not Majnun. The eye that is in Majnun's head is not in yours. How can you see Layla with an eye with which you look at others? unless you wash it clear with your tears. Look at me with the eye of Majnun. One should look at the beloved with a loving eye because he loves them. But the problem is they don't look at God with the eye of love. They look with the eye of knowledge or from the viewpoint of gnosis or philosophy. But to look with the eye of love is another work altogether. <laughs>